Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here, and welcome to episode number two of my Youth Academy project with Liverpool in FIFA 14 career modes. Here we're selling Brad Jones at his current value, which is amazing for an aging keeper to sell him at his value. It's always something I struggle to do. They always offer lower, as you know, especially when you transfer list them. So it's going to be tough. But here, Wolfsburg want Danny Sturridge. I'm not sure if I want to do that. So I made a big counter offer, and if it was accepted, it will be impossible to turn down, as you see. I think Brad Jones was joining Southampton there. So I think that's a decent deal. Like I said, the Salam at his value. And Danny Sturridge there. Uh, honestly, I did not want to sell him. I think the thing that led to me disallowing future offers I do soon is because I got an offer for Suarez as well. And I really wanted to keep them both at the team. Like I got offers, teams were interested for both of them. And I didn't want to sell both of them. If I sell both, even with unlimited funds, it will move into being unrealistic, if I, like if I'm honest, uh, that's what I mean. And here you're just seeing scout reports of players I put on my shortlist. As I said, I don't really want to show those scout reports. Uh, they're more so going to be private unless I want to show you how someone I want to sign here, like Simone Scuffe. I believe we need a future goalkeeper, a uh, younger type. And this is where this is going to begin. This is where the Youth Academy project begins. Finding a really good young goalkeeper with very good potential. He's had an amazing bump in his potential. It's up to 88, I believe, because in real life he made his debut and had a clean sheet for Udinese. And for some reason, EA decided he should get a potential boost from like 79 to 88 just off one game. So apparently he's going to be a superstar. He's going to be the next Buffon because he had one good game on his debut. He got a clean sheet. So we're going to do some negotiating and you're going to see my technique of trying to get the best uh, the, yeah, get him for cheap as possible. You're just going to see the negotiating between myself and the U, yeah, the Udinese scouting team or the transfer team or the manager. I'm not sure who actually handles the transfers. Is it the manager or is it um, other staff? Uh, leave it in comments. See, here we've got both, both offers for oh, two of amazing players, Real Madrid, Suarez. I do not want to sell Suarez. Suarez is going to guy who's going to get me out of those sticky situations. Uh, so I thought about countering offer for a little bit, but then I just put reject future offers. I'm going to be doing that or, yeah, disallow future offers for Sturridge and Suarez in the team because they're going to be the mainstay. They're going to be there until I start to bring through some talents, especially Suarez. He, I do not want to sell him at all. 88 overall, amazing player. And he's probably, no doubt he's the favorite player like with Gerard with Liverpool fans. Like, he's the guy who saves, he's the guy who wins you all the games, to be honest. So you cannot sell Suarez regardless of the money, because I'm not sure who I would bring in. That's a realistic transfer for Liverpool. That's the same quality, so that's what I mean. So here, again, with Scafe, Simone Scafe, he's got a five-year contract, only 17, a big contract for a young player, but we'll be probably giving him something similar if we can get him into the first team. And that's the thing, if I bring him into the first team, you need to play him, because if you don't play him, He's not going to increase as much as you want him to. So I might play him in cup games, but I have the realistic. I'm not going to give away like, I'm not going to give away chances to pick up points by playing him in all the league matches. Because don't forget, Mignolet is a younger keeper as well. Not really young, not 17, obviously, but he's not old. That's what I mean. So keep pushing up, and hopefully they can budge. They want 1.4 million, but I'm just going to keep nudging them and see how cheap I can get him for. And no doubt it will be a good transfer. Because if you watch one of my youth growth testing or whatever you want to call it yeah the youth testing or yeah testing the growth of players he actually uh, got up to 83 uh, 82 or 83 when he was just 23 so he definitely develops like then he's going to be better than Mignolet if I can get him to that so yeah no doubt he could be a good player and especially what I want to do with this series youth academy project he's going to be a big part see now they wanted 1.1 million so I just wanted to keep going next up to 800k and we'll see if we can get him this time uh, just keep nudging you to Naze. And see, look at that, uh, Lewandowski, uh, get him. And we sold Lucas Leiva for 9.4 million. I reckon, well, definitely that was above his value. Definitely above his market price as well uh, that my the, the chief executive was suggesting. So straight away, I've got this big shortlist of players that I've scouted. Jan and Via was the guy I want to go for. Again, a younger type, he's 23. I can see that five seasons with him at a high quality. So they're going to uh, find a better player. He's going to fit into... Not really part of the Youth Academy project side of things. A younger 17-year-old will be more so that the 23-year-old still fits into that somewhat because he has potential to grow. But more so, you see, we eventually accepted for 800k below his value. Fantastic. 
to get him that. Like I said, 800k is definitely below his value, like it said. But Jan and Via, we're going to have to do some more negotiating to get him for the cheapest price as possible, which I like to do. So I don't mind negotiating for a long time, as long as I get him for the cheapest they're willing to sell for. So eventually, Lucas Leiva did leave, and I believe that was, yeah, that was a good deal to get him. And especially as he's not really technically gifted again, he can't really take long shots. He's just a good defender, pretty much. He's not a defender, like a good defensive play in defensive midfield. He's good at winning the ball back. But if we can get Jan and Via for him, uh, Jan and Via will have more positive aspects younger and has potential to be better, I'm hoping anyway. So hopefully uh, Simone can come to the team and he can be a future player for us. And it's a perfect way for me uh, to kick off this series, a youth academy project with Liverpool, with signing... A very good player. And that's the thing. Not many people have it on YouTube careers because he just recently got a boot, like one, like a week ago or something, he got a boost to 88. So unless someone started a career a week ago, no one else will have him unless you're a lower team, I guess. Or if you be Udinese, not too quite too sure. But here we're going to get a couple scouts for two reasons. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a third, but we'll be getting a third one very soon. Uh, two right there, the English guy for the realism uh, to bring through the English youth players like Liverpool would do in real life, then Spanish, you know, like I've showed you already, and you would know anyway, I'm sure a lot of Liverpool fans would be watching this, you know, Liverpool have a lot of history of having Spanish players in the team, so I had the English one for, you know, English teams always will develop English players in their youth academy, that's just the normal thing, uh, because they're based in England, of course, but then I'm showing you, look all these Spanish players they've had, and also, uh, there's just a few there that I showed you, but there's also some that they've signed in previous years, but really haven't made the grade, and they've moved on to other teams. I'm sure you would know as Liverpool fans, they've got yeah, they've always signed quite a few Spanish players, especially younger types as well. So that's going to be another realistic aspects, hopefully. Anyway, so you see here the board again saying the league objective is to qualify for the Champions League. That's something I want to do. Champions League next season going to be hard, but if we don't, it's not the end of the world because I'm still new at the team and it's taken Brendan Rodgers. He hasn't qualified for Champions League. He probably will this season, though, like around that three years. Uh, but I would try to in two years. But I'm always going to try and do good. That's the thing. I'm going to do my best. So eventually, uh, we're going to get Scuff A into the team. Sorry, I almost lost my voice there. But anyway, moving on. To get him for that price was really happy. You see, his, where's his value? I don't know. But we signed him for 800k. That's a decent amount for him. A guy who's going to be at least 80 in the future. Uh, definitely should be more than that if we give him the right amount of playing time. But we can't, yeah, we can't sacrifice results. He cannot be played instead of Mignolet at the minute because he's only a 66 overall. So yeah, um, I'm not sure when I'm going to play him, but I'm definitely going to show because I want to show you how you can develop these players. But it's a bit hard. Like normally I will say play him every single game, but I can't do that with Liverpool. I cannot, especially if results are going to be tough. Uh, you can't change your goalkeeper when you're not even winning. That's going to be a big problem. So here we've got two guys. We're going to set up the scouting report. Obviously, we're going to... Set... It's just realistic to send them to their respective countries, even though it isn't really a thing in the game. I think it was in FIFA 13. Uh, when you send it to their home country, um, there's more chance of them finding a better player by sending them to their own country. But that isn't a thing in the game anymore, but I just felt it was realistic and... English and Spanish players are one of the best in the game to get youth players. They're not the best. Definitely Brazil and Argentina is probably the best in my view. But Spanish and England won't be too far behind if the game is being realistic as well. So sending them out for nine months, that's what I usually do. So we still got 19 million as well. So we have money if a five-star potential or a five-star judgment scout. Experience only matters if you search for specific positions or like technically gifted players or defensive players or goalkeepers that are, the judgment only matters then or the other experience sorry yeah, experience only matters then but I don't do that so experience does not matter as all so we pick up a 2-0 win to Monaco which is good you know they've got some quality players because of their recent funds they have picked up so Ruben Kazan are uh, being very difficult because I want to sign Jan M. Via and they're not letting me so we're gonna have to keep negotiating for them uh, for him and he'll be a really good replacement, I believe, even though he's probably not going to be first team. I want to keep Gerard as the first team player because I would imagine a lot of Liverpool fans will be watching this and want me to play Gerard and Gerard to come up with those crucial goals to win three points at home. The crowd will be going crazy. That will be insane if there's going to be some situations like that later in the season. I'm not quite too sure. That's something I want to happen uh, more than anything because 
showing that will be good. So hopefully uh, Gerard can step up for some important games for us uh, to win us some points and keep us in the top half of the table for this season. I'll definitely try my best to pick up as much points as possible. So Aga is concerned, but here, you know, we've got more funds from selling other players. And we've got a five-star judgment scout, and it was perfect because he wasn't five-star experience. Like I said, five-star experience is not crucial because I don't search specifically. I just do any, and that's what matters for experience, like I said. So he's a bit cheaper than a five-star five-star scout will be, uh, which is crucial because, as I said, I only search for any. Like, I want to search for the best players possible. So here, continuing negotiations with Ruben Kazan. We're hopefully getting closer to a deal because I really need to sign that position. If we don't, we're going to be in trouble, uh, even though we do have some players in that position already. Defensive midfield, Gerard. We can use some other players in that position, like Joe Allen as well, but I feel we need to get that replacement in, or yeah, it's definitely going to plague us uh, for Lucas Lever. And we've got all these good scouts coming in, five-star scout, and of course, with the, like I said, it doesn't matter what country you send them to, so next up, no doubt, it had to be to Brazil, the best country yeah, that's actually my opinion, and it's a true fact in the game as well. There's this website for U-tips. I'm not sure if I want to show you or not, but I guess there's no harm, but I might uh, drop it in the description. It's good. It's like, it's. It, I think it's just people's opinions. I'm not sure if it's a true thing in the game. I'm not really sure, but um, it's. it seems, what they talk about seems legit. So, uh, yeah, but in short, Brazil and Argentina are the best places to send out you scouts in short, to get the best players possible. That's in short, instead, instead of uh, telling you reading out the whole thing, which will take a good 10 or 15 minutes, uh, that's just a quick tip there. So Skirtle with a contract or a transfer offer, should say. Uh, I believe I made a good counter offer. If that gets accepted, it'll be a good high amount. And I've got some good amount of players on my shortlist after some scouting. So we'll see who we can get. Jan and V eventually being able to accept the, the transfer offer. Ruben Kazan eventually were... Uh, they... You think they would, but look at that. Um, 8.5 million for Skirtle. I think that was worth it and straight away. I was. I really like how I set this up, to be honest. Having a decent amount of players on my short list. If I sold someone, I have a player there. And we've got Mangala. He's a beast. Look at those attributes. And he's only 22. And I think he just recently turned 22. He starts 21. So, And 7 million value. That's not really, really high. So I believe we can get him for a decent price. And he's going to be, again, going with that youth policy. You can kind of say... Uh, signing younger players that are good enough for the first team, like Scafe isn't, but you've got to make the balance well. You've got to sign some of those younger types who have potential for the future, especially when you've got a good goalkeeper already with Mignolet. He's just going to be for the backup. That's the most realistic thing to do for me or most best thing to do. And we signed Ya Amvia, who is 23, and Mangala, who's 22. They're players that can definitely grow more, but are quality players already. Those are the kind of real player transfers I wanted to do and then used my youth academy for. Uh, the main base of this series um, as we go through the seasons. But for the first couple seasons, I want to make those really solid signings uh, that can keep improving the team as we go on with the first league match coming very soon against Stoke City. Hopefully we can get off to a promising start. I want to do my best uh, to get results, but more so uh, to give some younger types a chance. But honestly, I'm not going to be doing that at the start. Uh, because I want to get good results. That's the biggest thing for me. Then slowly introduce younger players. That's the best way. Like I want to introduce with these youth academy players. They're not going to be really getting a chance to maybe late next season. Or late this season, sorry. Because, you know, they get their update of their growth throughout the season on May the 1st. So late in the season, they'll be getting some chances. But not right away. I'm not going to throw them in. I'm going to be starting them on the bench. Might bring them in off the bench in some games when we're winning. And then if players do well, if I notice, because I want to show, I want to be really realistic. I want to play them in matches and hopefully show you if they do do well. And you can see they do well in the games, whether it be just passing well or scoring some goals. And then they'll merit a first team place. Then I'll give them a chance. And then I can show you how they play. That's the biggest thing for me when I want to do with this. Introduce these youth academy players and give them a chance. Like, like the new Gerard or something in Liverpool. You know, he started young and that's what I introduced in this series. And that's... A big reason why I feel it will be very enjoyable. So if you're enjoying this so far, please drop a like as this episode is ending and a comment uh, for me to read a bit later. And I'll see you guys next time.